Welcome to Tesla Car World. In today's episode, we'll find out the plan that Tesla will apply on their product line, especially the Cybertruck. With 48 volt low voltage architecture that promises to bring profits of up to $20 billion for Tesla. Besides, Tesla's Cybertruck impact on the global electric market helps Tesla realize their plans. Let's find out in today's episode of Tesla Car World. We welcome you back to our channel. And before we begin, we ask that you show your support by subscribing if you haven't already and ring the bell so you won't miss out on any of our interesting videos in the future. Now, let's get started with today's content. Tesla is famous for its pioneering advances in electric vehicles over the past decade. Recently, pulling back the curtain on a comprehensive guide detailing the intricacies of the 48-volt architecture used for drive-by-wire systems. While car companies have been stuck at 12 volts for decades, and Tesla has had enough of it. Why is Cybertruck 48 volt a game changer in the EV industry? First, the Tesla Cybertruck is the first vehicle of its kind that is 100% built on 48 volt architecture, making car manufacturing much simpler and lighter so fewer batteries are needed, as well as a 75% reduction in copper wiring and wire covers needed for cars. You can use much less copper. Um, and the wire harness weighs much less yeah. as you raise the voltage. Tesla wants to produce 20 million cars per year. So if you crunch the numbers here, that means Tesla needs 1.82 million tons of copper every year, which is crazy because almost 10% of global copper production goes into Tesla cars. You can see why it's so important to reduce that amount of copper they use because the more Tesla uses it, it actually drives up the price. So copper is quite expensive. Today, imagine how expensive it'll be when Tesla accounts for 10% of the entire world's production. You can understand why Tesla really thought this through when they decided to reduce the amount of copper in cars. So if it's true that Tesla can reduce copper by 75%, that means their copper usage will be reduced by 1.35 million tons, which means Tesla will save $11 billion based on the value of current copper. Surely, it could be even more by the time 2030 when the demand for copper increases the cost will be more because electric vehicles are on the market, which means more copper, so the price could double that. You can see Tesla's savings figures could be $20 billion. This is something that no one else has been able to bring to market in a production car. We have seen some hybrid cars using a motor that comes with the extra battery pack, but everything else in the car is just 12 volts and we've been using the 12 volt electrical systems for over 70 years. And even though our cars have beefed up their electrical equipment quite a bit, no one has actually been able to create a 48 volt architecture before. Things happening, uh, so besides 48 volts, it's also moving to ethernet um, right, yeah. uh, over CAN bus. Yep. So ethernet just allows for a much higher data rate than um, the sort of the CAN bus, which is the, the sort of typical data bus on a car. Elon Musk has revealed that Tesla has used the power over Ethernet standard as a general rule that allows about 15 watts of power per pair of 23 AWG wires. It's like learning about how the internet works. With a typical electric vehicle wiring harness that can weigh up to 180 pounds, most of it is copper wire. And you know, copper is not cheap. It's actually quite an expensive material. However, the weight reduction is negligible over the 40 to 50 pounds of copper in the car. This reduces current demand, meaning the car only needs a quarter of the amount of delta, saving Tesla money that it can then pass on to you. Uh, you know, there are, there are hundreds of things that interface to the, the, the low voltage bus. Um, and that's everything from, you know, the electronics in the car, the, the window, yeah. the, the window motor, the uh, airbags, the, 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 you know, the, the, thing, the, the, the seat adjustment mode, everything, yeah, everything. Is, is set. The, the, the headlamps, everything's set to 12 volts. Uh, so the entire supply chain, um, the entire design infrastructure is set for 12 volts. This is why it's been stuck at this absurdly low number for a long time. In reality, all those cost savings start to add up, meaning Tesla can offer a product that costs less than its competitors. And that's the main idea here, is the thing to say is cars have been operating on 12 volt battery voltage for about a century, so for the first time, we think in over 100 years, we're actually going to change from 12 volts external to the powertrain to 48 volt architecture. At the same time, it will improve power savings on the Cybertruck using an 800 volt main structure. Modern cars are using more electricity for things like power doors and tailgate, heated seats and brake assist. 
so the trend is to require more copper wire and reverse the move to 48 volt. This is not such a high voltage that thicker insulation is needed, mainly to prevent physical damage or exposing the wires. So the wiring will look the same. It's likely that the remote control philosophy will be adopted at the same time. Instead of routing all power through user-operated switches as in 1960s cars or using electromechanical relays as in cars newer, the user controller sends an encoded signal, a signal on the data bus, to the power controller near where the actual power is used, instead of multiple 12-volt wires from under the hood to the rear of the vehicle for defrosters, fog lights, taillights, etc. Tesla appears to be generating 48 volts to allow the Cybertruck to be retrofitted with a drive-by wire system so there will be nothing linking the steering wheel to the tires. Only when you turn it on will the wheels turn immediately. This also means that the vehicle turns the wheels differently depending on whether you're driving fast and don't want the wheels turning much or are on a construction site where you want the vehicle to be as maneuverable as possible and with the rear wheel can also rotate. The turning radius of this Cybertruck is much smaller than the F-150 Lightning or Rivian. It's the most maneuverable pickup truck in the world now and in the future. The Cybertruck will be even put on a go-kart racetrack. They said it wouldn't be able to do it, but in the end, it did it with ease. It's a great car with good steering feel and suspension that's so great it makes you wonder why steering isn't always like this. So Tesla reinvented the entire electrical architecture in cars and was the first company to bring steering by wire to market in a production vehicle. So once again, doing something the older guys never did before. The Cybertruck runs on an 800-volt platform whereas Hyundai already has 800 volts in their cars, but they still only have the 12-volt architecture, so they still work with four times the current in cars. They still require much larger wires than the Tesla, and so there's more copper in the cars, making them heavier to move. The main design benefit of the 48-volt system is the drive-by wire system. For the first time in a production car, there is no physical connection between the steering wheel and the front wheels, and the only thing this wheel is connected to is a series of sensors and force feedback components. An all-by-wire steering system is another thing engineers have been dreaming about for decades. While Lexus is currently working on it, so far no one has had the courage to put into production. Furthermore, this will be the safest car you can stay in a vehicle thanks to its tough stainless steel. Let's not forget, this is the company that created the Model S. It not only broke the record for safest car ever tested, but was so powerful that it actually broke the test device and then broke the scoring system by earning 5.4 stars out of a possible total of 5. Model failed the test when they couldn't get it to roll over to measure rollover safety. Then, the Model 3 became the safest car ever tested. And then the Model Y beat it too, and the body was sturdy, and the giant Giga casting created a greater torsion than a Porsche 911. How would Tesla bring 48 volts to the entire industry? The last time the industry increased the voltage of cars was from 6 to 12 volts. Also, because of increasing current demand, this happened about 70 years ago in 1995. And the industry has been stuck there ever since. But think how small the electrical needs were in cars in the 1950s compared to today's. The industry's been trying to move to a 48-volt architecture for decades, and we've seen components suitable for this extra battery architecture appear on the market. But due to incredible disruption, both neither suppliers nor auto companies were able to make the switch. Then Tesla had to finally do what was needed, so they sent out a pamphlet to the CEOs of every other car company titled How to Design a 48-Volt Vehicle. Tesla has no intention of stopping there by simply switching from 12-volt to a 48-volt architecture for its own electric vehicles. They want to help popularize 48-volt architecture throughout the entire industry. This is why Tesla sent out the 48-volt system specs to other manufacturers, and Ford CEO Jim Farley confirmed that he received it and will likely start this with several of Ford's next-gen all-electric vehicles. Let's also recall that in its new electric cars, Tesla still uses a 12-volt low-voltage system, but has managed to switch from conventional lead-acid auxiliary batteries to much lighter lithium-ion auxiliary batteries. This switch was announced in February 2021 and first debuted on the refreshed Tesla Model S and Model X, and was later also used in the Model 3 and Model Y later in 2021. Additionally, Tesla knows that the transition to 48 volt will be extremely difficult for traditional OEMs. And even so, such a change is likely to benefit Tesla. However, for Tesla, there are theoretical benefits in case the broader industry moves to this new vehicle system. 
The more components in the global vehicle supply chain that are designed for this low voltage system, the more the cost of those components will decrease over time through volume, competitive engineering, and reliability of the component's producer. Furthermore, Tesla has two distinct advantages in moving to 48 volt that traditional automakers do not have. The first is the unusual vertical integration in its approach to vehicle manufacturing. Tesla designs nearly all of its vehicle systems in-house, even if they can be produced from third parties that actually produce them. The second is that Tesla doesn't have many traditional vehicle designs to support or consider when deciding on an electric architecture switch. In other words, Tesla's focus on independent engineering and low legacy debt are the main reasons why it was able to introduce the 48-volt vehicles, while other OEMs continue to use 12-volt and likely will as well. So for many years to come, even in their electric vehicles. And simply telling other automakers how they built 48-volt systems isn't going to change that reality overnight. Finally, for today's news, the Tesla Cybertruck has been making ways with rumors about its strong competitiveness in the market. This truck is an evolution of the pickup truck in many ways. Its bold design, many features, interesting solutions, and market positioning make it one of the most important discoveries of 2023. What are the real impacts of Cybertruck on Tesla's sales in the global market? The Cybertruck is arguably Tesla's most capable vehicle yet, combining true supercar acceleration from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 2.6 seconds with the practicality of a pickup truck and seating for five people in the cabin. Thanks to the capabilities of its battery and software, Tesla has shaken up not only the major electric vehicle markets, but also the industry as a whole. Cybertruck is a confirmation of this trend. With an initial price of $61,000, the Cybertruck really isn't cheap. The price is a far cry from the $40,000 Musk promised four years ago and is a result of inflation and real-world production challenges. However, this is a competitive base price for a vehicle with these features. The average retail price by volume of electric pickup trucks sold in the U.S. from January to September 2023 is $82,835. On the other hand, the cheapest rear-wheel drive Cybertruck won't be available until 2025, and it costs $11,000 more than the cheapest Ford F-150 Lightning. The Chevrolet Silverado EV will also cost several thousand dollars less, so Tesla won't be able to undercut the Detroit brands in a price war. Things are different at the other end of the price scale. The most expensive Cybertruck, officially called Cyber Beast, has 845 horsepower and can travel up to 320 miles on a single charge. Its price is $99,990, which in this case is more affordable than its closest competitor like the GMC Hummer EV pickup truck, which although the truck has 1,000 horsepower, it's also 2,000 pounds heavier and slower than the Cybertruck in the race Tesla revealed. Maximum range is a little better at 381 miles, but the top GMC Hummer EV three-time trim starts at $106,945, and Rivian is competitively priced but still a bit slower than Cybertruck. Meanwhile, the all-wheel drive variant has a price tag of $79,990, comparable to the Ford F-150 Lightning Lariat, currently priced at about $69,995. Cybertruck has 600 horsepower, slightly higher than the F-150 at 580. The difference is not significant until we consider the range and towing capacity of these two models. The Cybertruck has a range of 340 miles, while the F-150 is only at the regular 240 miles. As such, the latest Tesla looks competitive compared to its US rivals. It could do very well in this market where pickup trucks dominate the streets. From January to October 2023, a total of 959,000 new light electric vehicles were sold in the U.S. While this is a solid 60% increase over the same period in 2022, these vehicles only make up 7.4% of the total market. Meanwhile, battery electric vehicles account for 15% of all vehicles in Europe and about 20% in China. For the Cybertruck to succeed, it must win in North America just like Tesla created the world's best-selling car Model Y thanks to strong global sales. What do you think about Tesla's low battery architecture, and what will its impact be in the future? Feel free to share in the comments section down below. And if you had a blast watching this video, show us some love by smashing that like button, subscribing, spreading the word, and smacking the bell icon to get notified of more exciting episodes.
Thank you so much. Until next time, stay safe and God bless.